Y'all ready? Already? 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 Welcome to the Upside Down Smiling Show, where we talk about real life, but we don't take life too seriously. My name is Shireen, and I have my family friend Sindhu here. Hey. Sindhu, tell them what you're up to about your profession. Oh, my name is Sindhu, and I am a professor of communication studies and a diversity and inclusion consultant. And um, yeah, that's kind of who I am. I'm on Instagram. A small following but yeah. <laughs> on Shakti Diversity and Equity. You can follow me there. She's been posting a lot of things about like racism and specifically about anti blackness. And so we are both of the Indian community. Malayali Kanana. <laughs> Malayali Kanana, yeah. And um, it's definitely something that I think is an issue in the Indian community. One thing that you kind of brought up is about like the systematic and kind of like how we've been, our minds have been yeah. trained and I kind of want you to talk a little bit about that. Anti-blackness is the covert and overt both systemic and interpersonal racism against black people. So we're talking about the specific violence, discrimination and harm um, that is placed on black people that impacts the health, wealth and safety of this community. Um, and the thing about anti-blackness is that it is not something that just started in this country like after Trayvon Martin was murdered, right? right. That's what a lot of people think. Yeah. Anti blackness has been embedded in the fabric of the society so it's been designed um, to fit into our society yeah. and you won't know that unless you really study history and I recommend that you really take a deep dive into history I can't do that in 10 minutes right now <laughs> uh, but if you just go back to the 1600s right yeah. when slavery started um, for 250 years black people were enslaved they were treated worse than we would treat like a stray dog right? yeah. that's the reality of it um, and when um, slavery was abolished it was about 10 years um, where black people were free and the idea was that black people are genetically inferior than white people And I think a lot of people think about like oh slavery was so long ago, but it's it not. wasn't that long ago Yeah, and I mean it started a long time ago, but didn't end that long ago Yeah, and ten years after slavery we had the Jim Crow laws So the Jim Crow laws were separate but equal but don't let that fool you because there was nothing equal about black people mm -hmm. So for a hundred years separate but equal Jim Crow laws were um, put into place and basically what that meant was segregation right so black people were inferior so we couldn't so white people couldn't mix with them so here we had you know separate schools you couldn't take the same bus separate bathrooms separate libraries separate uh, medical facilities 99% of the time those facilities were not equal right um, yeah. I'm an educator so I know that in a lot of in the south especially um, in schools black students were had to be their own janitors right wow. and white students had janitorial services I yeah. mean the parents out there who have kids, or if you're a student yourself, imagine having to like clean the bathroom. Taking care of that as of a day. student, right? So, um, and also at that time, there was government policies and procedures, government sanctioned policies and procedures that helped to keep white people elevated in status in society. We learn about other people from media, mm -hmm. from society, from education, from our families. Right. And uh, black people are overrepresented in the media as being violent, yeah. as being drug addicts, as being mm -hmm. criminals. And so um, we're, we're learning to associate black people in that way, right. just like you know, what do you think about what? What do you associate peanut butter with? What's the first thing? Peanut butter and jelly. That's subconscious. We're not thinking about that. We're subconsciously right. associating black people with being violent. We don't break bread with black people on a large scale in the Indian community, right. and so we go off these stereotypes, these biases that we don't even know that we have, yeah. um, and so that we have these ideas about black people um, that perpetuate anti-blackness. Yeah, I was just thinking about like <laughs> young people, educated people my age that have said things like, you know, but they have the same kind of opportunities mm -hmm. or they're not working as hard oh, yeah. or um, things in that direction. And I think for me, one big takeaway that I want to kind of talk about is like how to handle those situations because this is something personal for me because I have black people in my family mm -hmm. and I don't want anyone in my family to ever feel different, ever feel like they are not equal or they're, they are less than, mm -hmm. which is which is, I think, deep down what a lot of Indian people do think. Yeah. So I think one of the things that you said, I, I, it made me think about the model minority myth. Mm -hmm. And it is related to us as being, we're part of the Asian group. And yeah. Indian people are the wealthiest, we're the most educated. Yeah. And the idea, is, and that was a term coined by government officials. And the idea is we came here after 1965 in a widespread way. And now we know English, we right. are educated. What Well, we can do it then. Black people have been we here We chose since. to come here. 
Exactly. <laughs> we chose so to come to We this have country. to remember that yeah. we chose to come here yeah. and black people experienced over 350 years of systemic oppression and laws and policies that oppressed them and discriminated against them. We didn't have to deal with that. So we are we have an upper advantage because we came here and black people actually literally cleared the path. They did for us. everything for us. <laughs> yeah. They did they they pushed through all of that. I mean we do have we deal Civil with a little, a little bit of racism, we do but racism. nothing in comparison to yeah. black people. So when you hear someone say, "Well, you know, black people are lazy," or you know, they're 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 not wealthy because they want to sit on their butts. No, you have to educate your family members or people about the idea that we didn't have to go through the obstacles that black yeah. people did. And actually, we have a lot to owe to black people yeah. for our success in this country. Because by the time we came here in a large wave, it was 1965. The civil rights had already been um, in tech for 10 years and so yeah. society ideas thinking was shifting right and so people were more willing to accept us now we experience racism I experienced a lot of it when I was younger it doesn't mean that we're not experiencing it but the difference is that we don't experience it in a systemic way yeah. that oppresses us mm -hmm. you know someone calling me Sindhu the Hindu hurt my feelings right. but it didn't stop me from having widespread opportunity you don't dismiss and dismantle stereotypes until you actually get to know people yeah I remember um, when you my parents came back from your sister's wedding my dad was like oh those people are amazing they were such they're just like us they're good mm -hmm. people yeah. I mean that was I don't know how many years ago since they got married but like a long time 15 years, 15 ago. years ago and I remember my dad being like they're great people right. and because you know his my our parents have been friends for like 40 something years so yeah. if his friends are allowing and accepting his daughter to get married and they met them they were able to disrupt stereotypes but that wouldn't have happened unless they sat down or they had exposure to them right so um, that's another thing is breaking bread with people and yeah. um, just getting to know people and a lot of times you know I do a lot of this work with just multiracial people and they say well I don't have access to black people bullshit I'm sorry yeah like you have access to black people you have access to anyone and it, it may not be like the most natural thing it may not yeah. be like the easiest thing but just putting yourself into in positions that you meet other kinds of people that are different from you I think it's just beneficial in general yeah and it might mean like talking to your post person right it might mean like you know at the, at the gas station when you go engaging by engaging with a dumb. random person yeah the yeah. cab driver just getting to know little snippets of people and hearing their history so that we can have more compassion and see that there isn't a single way of being black right um, black people are not a homogenous group just like yeah. Indian people yeah. are we have many bad people and good people and smart people People right. And, you know, and it's, the same, it's the same thing with yeah. black Americans and um, yeah, and I think that we have to remember that we are not better than other people. No. Um, we tend to be ethnocentric as humans, right? It's not just yeah. Indian people. And we also self-segregate and we think our way is the right way, but our way is just the different way. Right? Yeah. And I think, I think a part of that is probably to maintain tradition, maintain culture, yeah. and that can be done by still, I mean, we live in America, yeah. and so people <laughs> look different, and yeah. we need to learn about the people around us so we can be good community members, so we can be good neighbors. Yeah. Things are just going to continue to change when we have children and whatnot, and we want them to be going out, going out into the world and like being good people. One thing that I think that we can all do in the Indian community is explore our own biases and prejudices, mm -hmm. right? Because if you're a human, that means that you're prejudiced. It's yeah. not a bad or good thing. Everyone has biases and prejudices. And I'm pretty sure that if you're Malayali like us, like 99% chance that you've heard an auntie, uncle, friend, cousin say something that was anti-black, right? Yeah, for sure. And um, so we all are, and we just have to take some time to explore the, why do we think like this? Yeah. Where did this come from, right? In order to be able to identify um, that a lot of this is subconscious. Like yeah. we are anti-black because we're just living in America, and yeah. America, it, it, it's again embedded in the fabric of this country. Mm -hmm. um, I think another thing is to use your privilege and power to be an advocate and ally for people that are more oppressed than you. So mm -hmm. we are people of color, right? But we have we are a privileged group of color. Yeah. And so when you see uh, or hear anti-blackness, anti-black racism, call it out because when when you're silent then you're standing on the side of the oppressor we've had people in our Indian Malayali community that have been murdered right yeah because they've been associated with uh, terrorism mm -hmm. right that's that's a horrible thing um, but when we have to stop just working for ourselves right yeah. we need to advocate for our South Asians and you know our Indian Malayali even Kanana communities but we have to also start being selfless and working for other groups mm -hmm. um, so that we can all truly be equal yeah
Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate you of coming course. here. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Take care. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please tune in every single week. We're doing Upside Down Smiley episodes. And yeah, thanks. Bye. Bye.